In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at some tips for working with the Wind Removal Tool. And according to the documentation, all you need to use that is a CPU that supports the AVX2 instruction set, which applies to many users. In wind removal, we have a problem with low frequencies caused by wind. Listen to the following part of the clip and you'll see the issue we have here. Lots of unhelpful wind blowing across a microphone. Now we have a way to deal with all or most of that. To do that, all you do is click on the clip that you're going to apply it to, and then click on the Fix Enhance button above the timeline. Now I have an option that says Wind Removal. And when I highlight that, I see that I have a description in the middle window here as way I enlarge it. It tells me it's uh, artificial intelligence based. Now the first time you use this, you click on the Wind Removal button and it will try to download some and install a little pieces of software to add to what you normally get in PowerDirector. So you need an internet connection the first time you use this. So it will do that seamlessly and it, will, it won't require any additional effort whatsoever. I've done that already so I can't do it a second time, but I'll just simply click on the button and that will open up my wind removal panel. Now these are the controls that I have in wind removal. I have three sliders, a frequency limit, removal strength, and compensation. I have a button to apply it and a button to close the window, and I can listen to the clip either in the fixed version or I can click on the button and I can click in the original. So if I start and simply play it, I can press the space bar. I can hear the problem that I have. I have my time code telling me where that is. But one thing I don't like about this is I don't have a reference of where I am in the video. All I have is the time code reference and the slider. So if I want to check out how this sounds in a certain part of the video, before I start using the tool, I need to mark that minute, frame, and second reference point down and then I can move to it by either using the slider or I can type in anything on the time code and go to exactly where I want to check this out and see how well it's doing. That's one of the big disappointments about it. So it's a little bit of a klutzy thing right now because you can't see where you are in your video as well. But let's look a little bit at the controls that you have. The frequency limit is the highest frequency that you want to set that you want to try to have this particular effect work on. And the maximum and default is 2000 Hertz. Uh, I found that to be more than adequate. I haven't found a reason to change it. The average uh, speaking voice is between 80 Hertz and 1100 Hertz. So it's well within the range. And most of my sound from wind is low frequency anyway, but you can lower it if you want to. You cannot raise it. The removal strength, I haven't changed either. I've experimented with it. It's hard for me to find a reason to lower it, but that basically tells you the amount of wind removal it will attempt to do. And compensation, basically, according to the documentation, is how it attempts to resynthesize the original background noise uh, to make it look more natural. The default is 20%, and in the few experiments I've done, I found that adequate. But if one of these doesn't seem to work for you, be sure to modify the value by using the slider. So we've heard the original. Let's hear what it sounds like. Let's go back to the beginning and hear what it sounds like when it's been applied theoretically. We haven't actually applied it to our clip yet. I can press the space bar or I'll click on the play icon. Now there we are and it's working. I hear no, no wind noise at all in the sequence. Now I'm going to move to a place where I know I have some audio. I made a remark about what I was shooting and it was approximately a little over 17 seconds into the clip and I want to see if it ruined my voice as I remarked about what I was shooting. 
Let's play from here on out. Two ducks' butts here. <laughs> okay, I was uh, remarking that I was shooting the back end of two ducks, and it came the the audio, the voice came over just fine. So, I would rate this pretty high in, in terms of its effectiveness. Now, if you're happy with what it does, you click the apply button. It will render the new audio clip and replace the clip on the timeline with your new clip. So now if I go to the point where I have that remark I made, and I'm trying to find it, let's go about here, and we shouldn't hear the wind, but we should hear my sarcastic remark. Two ducks butts, here. <laughs> Sounds good. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is if you're going to edit this again, you're working on the edited clip. In order to use the original audio from the clip, you have to bring it in from the media room a second time because it's replaced it on the timeline. I was surprised at how well it seems to work without messing with the normal voice audio that I happen to have in this particular clip.